All right, so I've got to make a, uh, a little advertisement for the website, uh, and I just thought I'd flip on the mic here and just kind of explain what I'm doing. Uh, this is going to be for a, uh, it's just an ad for a, a free course we're going to give away for uh, anybody that signs up for a free user account on cartoonsmart.com, and uh, I'll just start typing this out. And they're going to get a uh, four-part uh, series on um, how to program an Asteroids-type game with Swift and Sprite Kit. Uh, so let's let's do a little something with uh, some fonts. You know, we'll use, use this existing image over here. It's just a graphic um, pulled off the internet of the old Asteroids uh, game. It's not actually going to be really prevalent in uh, what I end up with here. But uh, uh, so what do we got? We got um, just this text box. You can see you can make a text box here in Adobe Animate. Just click that, start typing. I'm using a font called Destructo Beam from Blambot. That's what that BB stands for. Uh, so to go check out uh, blambot.com, I'm pretty sure that's a, a, free fight, a free font that he gives away. Uh, if you want to use that exact same one. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to break this apart. You can see that uh, I've got it on the, its own layer over here. So if you want to make it a little bit more clear. So there's the font. There's the image back there. Uh, and then the stage color is just set to be uh, black. So uh, let's grab the text. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break this apart. So I'm going to go over here to break apart. Uh, you can see when I do that, it just breaks it down to individual letters. I want to do this one more time. Uh, so I'll spare you guys the hotkeys. I'll hit uh, break apart. There you go. And uh, let's give it... Um, Let's give it a nice little uh, kind of 70s arcade look. So I'm going to start with uh, a, a yellow just for the base color of this. I'm going to then create a couple more layers and I'm just going to copy what I've got here. So select it and I'm going to paste it right back in place again. Uh, you can go over here to paste in place. It's just a little modifier on the usual paste hotkey just holding out shift. And once I've got this uh, duplicate down, duplicate down here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here to uh, shape and then expand fill. I'm going to try to expand this out as much as I can. So basically, I just expanded it out f four points, and uh, you can see it's definitely gotten a little bit more expansive. Uh, what I want to try to do is, is, is hit that up one more time. Uh, but first, let me bring this. Yeah, let's see. Let's make that color a little bit darker. And actually, you know what? I think I'd like even that one to be expanded a bit more. Okay, so this is a common problem you get when you try to expand things too much. Uh, and I did just use the hotkey for a bit. Uh, let me go back and do it one more time for you guys. Expand fill. So I, I had the four and it just kind of blew apart. Um, just basically something to do with, you know, vectors colliding with each other. So when that does happen, uh, if you can't make it work at four, try it at three. And you can see, okay, that time it did actually work at three. So we've now uh, got this nice little exterior edge to this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one. I'm gonna paste this again, put it right down there. So you can see it's right behind that one on a layer below. Uh, let's go ahead and make this even darker. And let me just see how these look together. Okay, that's probably about right. So now what I gotta deal with is, obviously if I couldn't expand it a moment ago, I'm not gonna be able to do it again. Oh, actually I did, all right, so one worked. Well, and this is actually another thing you can try. Um, just just keep kind of bumping it up one at a time uh, until again, it, it sort of breaks out on you um, one more time. And so far so good, so I'll keep kind of doing that. And let's see how this looks. Okay, let's keep going with it. Maybe, maybe now I can go with, do it up at three and uh, this is a nice little hotkey to uh, learn how to use this is never a good sign though once you get the uh, the spinning wheel here so again probably what is happening is that um you know when it's figuring out how to extrude these these pixels and yeah, you can see it just kind of blew apart um it um you know just one thing's bumping into another who knows so um let me again I, i'm now I'm stuck trying to cancel this thing out and just hit undo. Uh, but what I was going to show you guys is one slight workaround to that is, is basically just copying and um, and pasting in place and then just kind of shifting over a little bit, you know, and, and then just kind of making your own kind of extrusion like that. Yikes, that took a while. Oh, there we go. All right, so uh, what I was, you know, like I was saying, the other thing you could do is let me just pieces over here so it's a little bit more clear it's hard to see in the dark but uh so you copy you paste it in place you kind of nudge it up copy it paste it in place you know basically do this 
We're just going to keep shifting it around. Uh, it doesn't always look that pretty, though. I mean, if you zoomed in, you can kind of see some areas like this. But, um, eh, but you know what? In this particular case, on a black background, you're not going to see that that well. But you, this, uh, this is good enough for what I wanted to do. Just uh, that little, you know, that, that's fine. I'm going to make the red a little less dark so we can see it a bit clearer. Okay, so that looks good to me. Let's, uh, you know, it's got a nice little, I don't know. I don't know what you call that. Um, I'm going to hit F8 on this. It's going to convert it to a symbol. Uh, so we'll just call this Asteroids Text. It'll go into the library at that point, but that's really not um, why I want to do it. It just makes it a lot easier to just kind of select this thing as one unit now. And here's one of the hotkeys I do want you to really focus in on. So um, we paste in place is one of them because i'm going to do that a lot in just a moment uh and then the other one is going to be to and you, out of the box you might not actually have a hotkey for this uh scale and rotate okay so i've actually set this to uh shift or i'm sorry command r and uh what this does is just going to knock it down in size you know you can do 80 percent you can do 99 percent you can even rotate it stuff like that uh but for repetitive tasks and like what we're about to do uh really comes in handy and uh so if you don't actually have a uh, a keyboard shortcut cut for that um look in here for scale and there it is scale and rotate and then you can just set it to what you want to yeah command r which for me, that actually ended. It usually replaces one of them, but I've never found that hotkey to be too useful. What the default is. Uh, all right, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste it in place, and I just moved it up some, right? Uh, and then I'm gonna just scale it back. Let's do maybe like 95, and uh, then from there, hold down the command key and hit da the down arrow. Okay, and that's gonna basically just put that behind the other thing. If you want to look for it in the menu, uh, you're going to drive yourself crazy because it's um, you'd be going, you know, modify, arrange, send it back over and over again. Uh, so, and you're going to hold down shift, command, uh, down, and that's going to send it all the way to the back. Uh, so, once we get the, the first one back there, let's go ahead and tint this. I'm going to make it just a little bit darker. Actually, about quite a bit darker. Let's, let's go like about 60%. Okay, now I'm going to do it again. So again, I'm going to push it back. I'm going to scale it down some. All right, you see where I'm going with this? Uh, and then I might just bump that up a little bit. All right, and we're just going to keep kind of doing that same thing. All right, a lot of time for, some, for whatever reason I moved it around myself. Um, there we go. Okay, so send it back. Let's go like 90% this time. Uh, let's take that up some. And eventually what I'm going to do is just kind of swoop it up into the distance. But I, won't, I don't think I'm going to know exactly when that perfect time to do it is until I see it. Okay, so maybe now let's do it. So I'm going to move it back, take it down about 90%, make it a little bit darker. Okay, and then I'm going to start this just going up with it. Let's see how that looks. And at a certain point, if your screen is really dark, you probably won't even start to see much of it. But yeah, that's that's it, you know. So it's just kind of got that nice little trail in the background, right? And I might move this down a bit too. Okay, got some nice little flair to it, right? Uh, next up, what else can we do with this thing? Well, um, if, if we wanted to give it kind of like a poster-like quality, you know, we've got the logo coming down like this. Uh, since, you know, the whole reason I'm doing this is to upsell, a, or not upsell, but to give away a free uh, bit of training. Let's, uh, let's, let's give it uh, some text over here. I would not go with the same text as the, um, what I was just working with down here. I think it kind of takes away from the, uh, uh, the fun of the logo itself if you start writing everything in that same stylized font. So I'm going to switch over here to a font just called Lato or Lato. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. But uh, I'm just going to make some, you know, kind of postery type text like, uh, you know, from a galaxy far away. But in this case, 
program a game like because it's just like asteroids it's not actually asteroids uh let's maybe make that a little bit smaller uh and then probably i would come over here and write something like uh with swift and sprite kit so by the way if you are not actually if you don't actually have a cartoon smart uh, a free user account yet go ahead and get one and you get to program an asteroids game in about an hour it doesn't take that long uh, okay, so that's you know that's uh, that's looking all right. Uh, another fun thing we could do is uh, let's go and grab this square over here. I'm going to set the rounding of it. So basically, if I just made a normal square, it's going to look like that. If I set the, um, the corner radius up, it's going to look like this, right? And let's get rid of what we had before there. So let's do. Maybe take like a orange or I don't want it to be too bright. I'm gonna take that down a bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna do something like this. Uh, obviously, I need to do this on a layer above what we've already got. There we go. And I'm gonna do another one within here, just another square. And then I'm just gonna delete out the one. Of the interior right so i'm just left with what you see right here let's go ahead and hit f8 on that <clears throat> let's just call this border okay um i'm gonna go ahead and take it uh i'm gonna cut it off of, oops, cut it off of here and then put it down with the other stuff or i can even put it behind it doesn't matter i guess probably it needs to go uh maybe up a bit here let me just select everything and move everything down some so command a will select everything yep Double check it, that's right. Uh, and then let's do this. Let's go. That's kind of falling out there, isn't it? Let me make this a bit taller. So hitting the Q key, a little some free transform there. Okay, so I'm going to copy, paste this one in place. Again, following our theme today, right? We could do uh, scale and rotate again. So it goes down a little bit. Let's. Um, Let's take the tint up on it. Let's go to something like that, maybe. And probably this needs to go in front of this stuff over here. So this is probably inevitable. At a certain point, I'm just going to want to grab everything I've got back there, except for this text. So you just hold down Shift to deselect that. Cut it off of there. Then just put it down underneath the, just any old layer below there, OK? As long as it's below this stuff, right? Uh, and then let's do that one more time again. So again, I'm just going to copy it, uh, scale and rotate it, uh, move it behind everything else, make it a bit darker. So now we're going to make this nice little frame for this, right? And again, I just hit the Q key to just manually free, uh, free transform it some down there. Um, so yeah, I, I like what we're seeing here. This could probably be put up a little bit or maybe even made smaller so we can see a little bit of that uh, but uh, yeah there we go kind of got that uh, fun little effect you can play around with uh, grab a square uh, just come up above on uh, I guess any layer above this stuff so how about right there and so just draw a square out here actually take off the rectangle options so start over again Oh, your square out here. If you were to view this as a wireframe, obviously you can just, you know, that's what it looks like as a wireframe. Uh, you can roll over here to the edges of this, just kind of grab the side of it, and I'm using the just the black arrow right now. Pull that down, pull that down, so you can move it anywhere, right? And uh, let's basically go back to showing it as a fill shape again. I'm gonna hit F8 on that. Should have given it a name, but I didn't, it doesn't matter. And let's go over here to display. Actually, yeah, go, over, go to color effects, sorry. Uh, take the alpha down on it, so about you know 40% or so. Uh, and then take, and then add a filter onto this. So set blur for that. Uh, and then the X doesn't matter too much. It's really the Y that I want to blur a bit more. Uh, then what you've got is, um, let's move this over some. I'm gonna send this into the, well, I need to put it behind most of this right uh, so let's at least get it on the same layer as that so I'm gonna just cut it off of where it was at 
uh, anytime you select an object, it's going to go to that layer that that object is on. So then I'm just going to paste this back in place again. And then again, holding down command and, the, and pressing down on the keyboard, I'm just going to start setting this behind stuff. And there we go. So it's now, it's now kind of like we've got this nice little, I don't know what you'd call that. Gives it gives it a little bit more dimension, doesn't it? So I'm just copying this over. You can always option copy things. If you hold down the option key and just drag whatever you've got selected, it'll just make a duplicate of it. And uh, yeah, that's, um, you know, hey, for 15 minutes worth of work, you've got kind of a nice little, almost like an app, uh, app icon or um, like I said, you know, a little banner for, for whatever you're doing. Um, be great for some sort of... Um, Google AdWords ad or something like that. I guess I'd probably move that down into that space. Uh, but uh, and you know we got some room down here to put uh, some more some more text in uh, something like dot 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 in under an hour because really it's only four courses they're about fifteen minutes long. So there there you go. So in all seriousness. Go sign up for a user account if you don't already have one, cartoonsmart.com, and you get to play around with Swift and Sprite Kit to make a nice little nice little game for yourself. All right, uh, and don't forget, if you don't have the Cartoon Smart app, uh, that's free for iOS devices and Apple TV. It is a lot of fun to just kick back on the couch, get your laptop on your lap, uh, you got the Apple TV in front of you, connect it to your big screen TV, and watch some tutorials. Uh, you know, you don't have to watch every second of what I'm doing as long as you're kind of working along with it and whatnot, glance up every once in a while. You can also put your music on the background, I guess, using a, your computer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that'll do it for today. Uh, and uh, uh, thanks for hanging in there, there with me.